what do the creative agency's character to book and practice all have in common? Well, not only do they all do really great work and they've all got single word names, they all have times on their website. So you can see that they're in SF and New York and on two, they're based in Barcelona, but they work worldwide. In book, there's three different locations and in practice, they're in New York, but they have clients in multiple locations. So what we're gonna talk about today is how we add time to our website in multiple locations. <music> So starting my project with a very simple framework. I've got some HTML in here with a section with a class of times, which is this whole area. And then I've got a div tag for each individual location. Each location has two parts to it. It has where it is, SF or Brooklyn, and then an output time. Now, currently I have this output time at 00, 00, 00. What we're gonna do is fill that in. Now my star sheet is also fairly simple as well. I've got a imported Google font here. I've got some font size, font weight, and what I have for each one is a little bit of layout. And the other thing that I have is this dot. So I'm using this before tag with some empty content in here and just style it as a circle. So how do we actually make this text update? Now, the one thing we need to think about is this will update every second, of course, and that will generally mean that we need some JavaScript involved here. Now, to make this a little bit easier, I'm actually gonna use a third-party library called Luxon. And what you can do with Luxon is basically very simple stuff very, very quickly. So we're gonna add a small bit of code, which is incredibly powerful. Now, of course, what we need to do is on five different locations, but we'll just start by adding one. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is install Luxon into my code. So to do this, I'm just gonna go down. I'm gonna to go to download. I'm gonna get the minified version of this. I'm gonna click here. Now this is gonna give me a load of code that looks like this. I need to just pull this into my project. So I'm get, gonna get this URL. I'm gonna go over here into my HTML. And at the bottom of my HTML, I'm gonna add this as a script tag. So script tag with the source equal to what was in that URL, something that looks like this. A GitHub URL with Luxon, and eventually luxon.min.js. Now this is gonna install all of this code from Luxon, but what we want to do is write some of our own code, and we're gonna go into the general documentation in a minute and just see what we need to write. So the first thing I'm gonna do is write some of my own code in this project. So I need a space to write my own code. I'm gonna add some scripts, and let's call it something like times.js. Now, what I want to do is use this code in here in my index.html, so it updates here. So I'm just gonna do a script with the source of times.js. So I'm loading Luxon, which is a third party library, then I'm doing times.js, which is some of my own code. Now what I want to do in my code in times.js is basically go over each one of these locations and update this output tag. So how do we go about doing this? Well, the first thing that I need to get in my index.html is each individual div tag. So I want to get this div tag one by one by one by one. And then for each one, I want to update this output tag. So to do this, the first thing I want to do is get each location. So const locations, this is going to be equal to in the document. I want to do a query selector all because there's more than one of them. And in round brackets, I'm going to put in quotes in this section dot times, I'm going to do a space div. So currently this will get five things. One, two, three, four, five. Now what I want to do because this is multiple items is for each one, I want to update this output tag. So underneath here, what I'm gonna say is locations dot for each. And in round brackets, what we're gonna say is, what do we want to do for each location? Well, I wanna do some code. So what we wanna have is some kind of placeholder for what each individual location is. Now, just to keep this short, I'm gonna call this one location, singular. It doesn't have to be called location, it could be called loc or l or potato, doesn't really matter. And what we're gonna say is this goes and does some code. So arrow and then some curly brackets. In the curly brackets, what do we want to do? Well, for each one of these different spaces, we want to update this output. So this has a output tag for each one. Let's go and get it. So in this individual location, we're gonna say const output. This is gonna be equal to not document, because that will get just the first one on this page five times. We wanna get it for each individual location within this area. Then what we can do is dot query selector, 
and in round brackets, output. So this is gonna get the output HTML tag in each individual location. So one, two, three, four, five. So let's just update this quickly. Let's say this isn't zero, 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 but something like hello. So underneath and still in this for each, we're gonna say output dot inner HTML is equal to in quotes, hi. So we should get hi one, two, three, four, five times. So what we actually want to do going forward is not just say hi, of course, we actually want to put in the time. So to do this, we're gonna go into looks and see what we can actually do. And there's actually quite a few things of what we can say here. In the installation guide, there's a few things of how we use it. We've already downloaded it and pulled it in. We can actually get looks on date time, for instance, and we can do a lot of things in here. In the quick tour, there's things that we can actually do as well. Now we wanna really focus on things like time zones and the offsets because we're gonna be in multiple places. And there's lots of things we can do in here and we can scroll down and see how this all works. Now I'm gonna keep this really, really simple. There's a lot of things that we can actually change in here. Now the first thing that we're gonna do is just get the time right now. So back in my code before I have my output and actually do this, in between there, what I'm gonna say is what is the time now? So I'm gonna say const now. And this is gonna be equal to looksum.datetime.now. And then we're gonna get now. So this is gonna to go to the Luxon library and in the date time part of the Luxon library, it's gonna work out what the time is right now. If I just put in now instead of these quotes, hi, let's see what we get now. We'll get something that looks like this. Now this technically is a time, it's the right date, it's the right time, but what we want to do is format this. And again, we can go back to Luxon and see if we scroll further down the sidebar, things like formatting. Now we can have a few different types of here. We've got things like to locale string. This is gonna do it in French if you're in a French browser, English if you're in an English browser. And there's a lot of things we can actually use as part of this as well. We can keep scrolling down and seeing all of this. So at the moment, what we want to do is not just say now, we want to make sure we're getting just maybe the time, the hour, for instance, and the seconds and the minutes, not all of this stuff. So to do this, not only am I gonna say now, I'm gonna say dot, to format and in round brackets i can put in the things i want to put in here so in quotes i'm going to say hh which is going to give me just the time now in brooklyn because i'm in brooklyn right now we can see in this top corner it's 13 48 this isn't updated for the different time zones it's just doing my time on my computer now this is just the hour i'm going to do a colon and say mm in lowercase i'm just going to get the minutes colon SS. Now, if I want to go and find what other things I can do, it's in Luxon, further down in the table of tokens. Here, I've got my second, I'm using SS, I'm using minute, which is this one. I'm using one with zero, seven in here. But there's a lot of things that we can actually add in here, things like .est, for instance. I can use ZZ, ZZ, ZZ in capitals. But there's a lot of things I can actually do, such as the year, the month, the actual day, for instance. I can put them all in this string. I'm gonna keep mine really short, though. Now the other issue you might notice is this is only going to do it for my time right now. And this also doesn't update either. So notice this is always going to be this time unless I actually refresh the page, which is now going to get the updated time. So there's a few things we need to fix. Now the first one I'm going to fix is let's make this update. So what I want to do is run this code here every second and on page load. So to make this kind of reusable, I'm actually going to create a function. Now the function I'm going to create is called update times. I could call it whatever. This is going to be equal to function round brackets curly brackets. I'm going to open up these curly brackets just to make it easy to read. And I'm going to take all of this code from here. I'm going to cut it out and paste it in here. I'm just going to indent it just to make it easier to read. Now this doesn't update the time. What we've done is we've made a function, but we're never using this function. So it doesn't, we don't know when to update the time. So underneath what we're gonna say is update times and then run it using round brackets. So what we get now is the same as what we had previously. But what we can do now is run this code in here every second. To do that, what we're gonna use is a set interval. Now, set interval is built as part of JavaScript in the browser. It means do this code every so often. So we're gonna use this using round brackets. 
What do we want to do every second? Well, we want to run some code. When we run some code, we run a function, round brackets, curly brackets. Then afterwards, we're going to do a comma. How often do we want to run this? Well, JavaScript works in milliseconds. So if you want to do things every second, there's a thousand milliseconds. So I'm going to write 1000. So what we've done now is we've updated the times on load and we've got an interval ready to go. But in this curly bracket code, what we're going to do is open it up again, just to make it easier to read. What do we want to run every second? Well, we want to run update times round brackets. So now what we should see is all of these times updating every second. Now the other issue that we have is this is running the same time depending on the browser. Now what I want to do is change it depending on where we are. Now back in Luxon, we can go back in the time zones and offsets and we can see if we scroll further down, there's ways to specify a zone. A zone is a kind of place. Now the way that we're going to do it is using this I-N-N-I-A-N-A. -N -N, uh, -A -A. This is going to look like America slash New York. Now, if you want to find your time zones, there's a really good Wikipedia page that looks like this, a list of TZ database time zones. We can actually scroll down and find the ones we want to find. We'll talk about this in a second. But if you want to find not just America, New York, or somewhere else, you can find it on this page. So how do we go and use this? What we can do is something like dot set zone. So let's go and do that. So currently I'm in Brooklyn. Let's just set it all to New York right now. So not only do we set in the time zone to now, what we want to do is say, well, we want to set now to dot set zone and in round brackets, the zone we want to actually go to. So let's just set it to London. So back in here, we're going to find London. And this is linked to London. There we go. It's further down. We can use this here, Europe slash London. So back in my code. In quotes, I'm going to do Europe slash London. So currently, this is the time in London. So we can set this depending on where we are. So if I want to set this to Berlin, I can go back to here and say, where is Berlin? Europe, Berlin. And we're going to set this one to Berlin. Now, of course, all of these times are going to be different. So this string here is going to be different depending on where we are. Now, what I'm going to do is actually move this area into my HTML just to make it a little bit more updatable. So back in my index.html, where should I add this? Well, I don't want to just suddenly add this straight in my code. So for instance, something like this, this is going to look pretty ugly. What I can do is actually hide this string away as part of a data attribute. Now I want to do this for every single location and they were on the div tags. So to do this, I'm going to set a data dash time zone. This doesn't really mean anything apart from have a hook between HTML and JavaScript data time zone for this top one. Let's for now just say Europe, Berlin. The next one, data dash time zone is equal to, what was it before? It was the New York one, new underscore York. Let's go and find that. There it is. I'm gonna copy that and paste it in. Same for London, data dash time zone is equal to Europe slash London. Berlin was Europe slash Berlin data time zone is equal to Europe slash Berlin and Hong Kong is, let's go and find it, Hong Kong. There it is, Asia underscore Hong Kong. So let's add that in as well, data dash time zone equals that. Now, what I want to do is use this data dash time zone actually in my JavaScript. At the moment, this isn't changing anything about the HTML. There's no content. But what I can do now is pull this information into my JavaScript. So back in my times.js, underneath here, not only am I getting the locations output tag, underneath here, I can get the const time zone. And this is going to be equal to on that location tag, which is a div tag, we can get the attribute and in round brackets, which attribute data dash time zone. So now this is a string that we can actually pull in. So instead of this all being Europe slash Berlin, instead we can just write the word time zone. Now some of these cities won't actually have exactly the time zone that you expect. So for instance, San Francisco isn't doesn't have a San Francisco one. We can actually just get something nearby. And the one for this is actually in L, uh, LA. So it's a Los Angeles one, which looks like this. Why is it gone? There it is. Let's just get that America slash Los Angeles. So occasionally you might actually get a different time zone in there. 
America slash Los underscore Angeles. So what we have now is an updated time. Now, one thing that we can actually do with this information is let's take this little circle here and let's light it up for the places that might be currently open. So for instance, San Francisco and Brooklyn, this is within our working hours, but London might have clocked off. So let's highlight these areas. So again, back in my times.js, what I could do is add a class to this to say, Brooklyn and SF both should be highlighted. So here, what I can do is similar to what I have here, I can use the same information and say, what hour is this? So actually let's do this underneath. So underneath here, we've got the output. Let's get the hour. So this is gonna be equal to now dot to format. And in round brackets, we need which bit from Luxon. Again, back in formatting, let's get the hour, which is singular one, which is this H lowercase, well, uppercase H, let's get that. Now this is currently a string and I wanna do some number comparison to this. So what I'm just gonna do around this is turn this or pass it into a integer. There we go. So we can now do if round brackets, curly brackets, if the hour is bigger than, well, when do we work? Maybe something like nine to five. So if the hour is bigger than nine or equal to nine and the hour is less than something like, well, we want to clock off at six o'clock. So it needs to be less than six, 18. In these curly brackets, what we can do is something like, well, let's turn on this circle. To do this, what we're gonna say is location.classlist.add and in round brackets, open. Now this is gonna add a class into CSS that we can't currently see in our HTML, but what we can do is style things up. So back in my style.css, now what I could say is on my section for times, my div may have a class of open, which means I can style things up. So for instance, I could say, my color is in red. So I've got these three are open right now, but I can also target other things as well. So instead of this background uh, color being gray, I could say something like on this H2, the before tag, which is currently the circle, now has a background color of red, but let's make this something nice. Let's make it a yellow color. So something like hash FFF182. So these are the current places open, and if it's not open, it'll be in a gray color. So what we have here is we've got an updated time using this Luxon library. We're actually doing some clever calculations with it, and we've made our own agency style time zone information.